call the meeting to order. Welcome to the Local Agency Formation Commission, County of Current, State of California, for our September 27th, 2017 meeting. And I'll ask our clerk to call the roll, please. Commissioner Fowler. Commissioner McKibben. Commissioner Sanders. Here. Commissioner Rivera. Here. Commissioner Scribner. Here. Commissioner Mello. Here. Commissioner McGuire. Here. Commissioner Couch. Here. Commissioner Garola. Present. Thank you, and we will um, start off with our Pledge of Allegiance, and I will ask Commissioner Mello if she would lead us in the pledge, please. Please stand. Thank you, Commissioner Mello. All right. Okay, next item on our agenda is item number three, and that is the approval of the minutes for the July 26, 2017 meeting. So if everybody's had a chance to take a look at the minutes, I don't know, do we have any changes that anybody saw? If not, then I'd entertain. Okay, we have a motion for approval from second. Commissioner Rivera and a second from Commissioner Couch. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our agenda is public comments. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the commission on any matter not on the agenda and over which the commission has jurisdiction. Speakers are limited to two minutes. Please state your name and address the, for the record before making your presentation. Do we have any public comments? Okay, I don't see anybody desiring to make public comments, and so we're gonna move on then to, let's see, item number five, notice public hearings. We don't have any items there, so we'll move on to item six, which is public project review. The first item A, 1709 Lost Hills Utility District, annexation number 18, and I know our um, council has a statement he'd like to yeah. make. Mr. Chairman, I'm, the applicant is my client, so I'm gonna recuse myself. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman, the item you have before you is uh, 1709 Lost Hills Utility District, annexation number 18. For your consideration of the proposed annexation of property into the Lost Hills Utility District, previously the commission approved a sphere of influence amendment and extension of services outside the district boundaries. As requested by the commission, the district has applied for annexation. The area proposed for inclusion into the district boundaries consists of approximately 20.43 acres of land. The area is south of Highway 46, east of Lamberson Avenue, adjacent to the community of Lost Hills. The property owner has a need for water and sewer service to one parcel due to the construction of a charter school. If approved, this project is subject to conditions uh, recommended by the executive officer. CEQA is met by notice of exemption prepared by and adopted by Lost Hills Utility District. They have signed an, an indemnification agreement there is no tax increase. Uh, there is no change in zoning. This project is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. It conforms to the assessor's parcels and is consistent with the general plan, tran regional transportation plan, or specific plan. There is no functional overlap to this project. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including notices to affected agencies and any notices and public publications required by law. We have received no comments on this application. Annexation of the one property, which is with one owner, has 100% landowner consent. Therefore, the district has requested notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. It is the recommendation of the executive officer to waive the notice hearing and protest hearing and approve this annexation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Knox. I'll ask if there are any members of the audience who would like to make comment on this item. Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the board. Any questions or comments? Otherwise, entertain a motion. Make a motion, we approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion from, from Commissioner McGuire, a second from Commissioner Mello. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And the next item on the agenda is item B. This is 1710, City of Bakersfield. Callaway number 16, annexation number 673. Mr. Knox, please. 
Mr. Chairman, this item also includes uh, the attachment of County Service Area 71, which makes this a reorganization. The item is a proposed annexation of approximately 0.88 acres into the city of Bakersfield. The proposed area consists of one parcel with a medical office located on the west side of Callaway Drive, approximately 530 feet north of Brimhall Road. Water is currently provided by Vaughn Water Company and sewer by County Service Area 71. The, the property owner wishes to receive water and sewer service from the city of Bakersfield. This proposal has 100% landowner consent. Applicants have requested notice and hearing and protest hearing be waived. There is a notice of exemption prepared and adopted by the city of Bakersfield for CEQA. Uh, they have signed an indemnification agreement and is a condition uh, placed on this project by the executive officer. There's no tax increase. Uh, zoning is a little different. Uh, this is a change from a neighborhood commercial precise development, a C1PD in the county, and has been pre-zoned SR suburban residential by the city of Bakersfield. Under the city of Bakersfield zoning ordinance, this is allowed as legal non-conforming use and is therefore consistent with the city's general plan. It is consistent with the general plan, the regional transportation plan, and the specific plan. It is consistent with commission policies. There is no ag land conversion. Uh, the parcel conforms to the assessor's maps. There's no functional overlap. Uh, because this is less than 10 acres, you do not have to consider uh, disadvantage in the incorporated communities. The city has a municipal service review that's, that's um, active. Uh, and the city can meet the water supply needs uh, for this area. The process required by the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act has been followed, including the notice to affected agencies and any notices and publications required by law. Annexations to the city of Bakersfield has 100% landowner consent. The district has requested notice hearing and protest hearing be waived. It is the recommendation of the executive officer to waive the notice hearing and protest hearing and approve this reorganization. Thank you, Mr. Knox. I'll ask if there are any members of the public that would like to make any comments on this item. Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the commission for any questions or comments or entertain a motion. Motion on staff's recommendation. Okay, motion from Commissioner Couch. Second. Second from Commissioner McGuire. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The next item on the agenda is item seven, commission items. Do we have any comments from the commissioners on any items? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on then to general business. This is item eight, and the first item, A, approval of claims list number 17-07. I don't see any, we have a, a motion from, I'm sorry, okay, Commissioner Couch, and second from Commissioner Rivera, please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And item B, adopt resolution confirming the results of protest hearing for 1703 City of Bakersfield, Michelle number one. Mr. Knox, please. This commission approved the annexation of Michelle Number 1 into the City of Bakersfield at the June meeting contingent on the results of a scheduled protest hearing. Notices were published for the Cortese Knox Hertzberg Act and the protest hearing was held on August 21st at 2 p.m. at the LAFCO office. There were no protests filed either in person or through the mail. It is a recommendation of the executive officer to accept the results of the protest hearing by resolution. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Any comments on this item from members of the audience? Okay, seeing none, return to the board, to the commission. Move approval. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Couch, second from Commissioner Gorilla. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. And next we have item C, sphere of influence, five-year questionnaire reviews. Mr. Knox, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Every five years, a sphere of influence for special districts and cities are required to be reviewed by this LAFCO. This is com completed through a questionnaire sent out to each city and district. Today, we bring you the first batch of those who are eligible to have their spheres reviewed and have completed the full questionnaire. We have another group that 
has turned in an incomplete questionnaire that we're going back and asking for additional information. We also have a group that has ignored our request, but we are still contacting them and picking them off one at a time. Uh, so today we're going with the ones who are complete. Several cities and special districts have amended their sphere or completed municipal service review in the last five years and do not need to complete a new questionnaire at this time. It has come to my attention that the report and recommendation refers to cities who have completed their MSR, which makes a sphere questionnaire redundant, but that the report and recommendation does not list those cities. Those cities are the city of Tehachapi, Shafter, Wasco, and Bakersfield. We have 26 um, special districts that are complete. 20 of those have indicated that they have no changes uh, coming in the future for their spheres. Six have indicated that they expect to modify their sphere of influence in the next five years. Those include the Indian Wells Valley Airport District, North Kern Cemetery District, Shafter Wasco Irrigation District, Tehachapi Valley Rec and Park District, Desert Lake Community Service District, and Shafter Rec and Park District. The last two of those uh, actually changed their mind when we had a phone call with them and, and told them exactly what this was all about. And said, oh yeah, yeah, we, we're, we're gonna change ours. So um, we are working with all of those uh, going forward to get those, those, those spheres updated. Um, is my recommendation that we, the commission adopt a resolution reaffirming these spheres of influence as presented in compliance with government code section 56429 slash nine. Council, do I need to read each of the districts in? Okay. You, you have the list of districts in your, in your packet. All right, thank you, Mr. Knox. Um, any comments from the audience on the SOI five-year questionnaire review? Okay, seeing none, then I'll return to the commission. So this is a, a um, request for approval of the list, is that correct? Of the, uh, I'm sorry, the resolution? Y yes. Okay, thank you. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Commissioner Couch, second from Commissioner Rivera. Please cast your votes. Motion approved, all ayes. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item, under item eight is D, appoint delegate for Cal LAFCO conference. This is a, a chair appointment. And we have Commissioner Sanders, McKibben, and Couch planning on attending. And so um, I'd like to appoint Commissioner Sanders as the delegate and Commissioner Couch as the alternate. Unless there are any objections from the commission? Okay, thank you. And that doesn't require a vote, right? Okay, thank you so much. And finally, item E, executive officer miscellaneous items. Do you have any items, Mr. Knox? I have several items today. Okay, all right. Uh, it's been two months since we've, we've met and quite a bit's happened. Um, state law requires each county to create an oversight board for the winding down of resource development agencies. The oversight board consists of a number of appointments, including one for special districts. The legislature, in all their wisdom, has decided that LAFCO already has a process for electing special district members, so we should be the one to hold the election. Uh, so, uh, before uh, June 30th of 2018, uh, we will be providing an election for a special district member to the oversight board for redevelopment agencies. I have been working with the county CAO's office and auditor's office and setting it up. They will be kind of handling the rest of the appointments, uh, including I believe one uh, for a supervisor and a couple of city council members uh, from different, Am I back on? Okay. Um, so that's the bad news. The good news is uh, there's some legislation that's come out of this. The gover governor recently signed AB 979. The bill amends the uh, government code section to streamline the process of seating a special district on LAFCO by Mary and Kurt statutes. Uh, the process for, for electing a LAFCO special district member that we use is go as vote by mail. And what we've had to do in the past is get enough uh, votes in to have a majority of the special districts. Uh, so if we have 100 special districts, we'd have to have 26 votes in to make a, a full election. 
Now it's just going to be a simple majority. So if we get 11 votes in, those 11 votes count, and that's who's going to be elected. So very much streamlines the process. In the past, we've had problems getting a quorum of votes to make it for a valid election, so this is going to be helpful. I have some f further legislative updates. Uh, AB 464, uh, this is a bill that CalAFCO sponsors. This makes a bill to fix Government Code Section 56653 based on a court finding in the case of City of Patterson versus Turlock Irrigation District. The court found that because the services were already being provided via an out-of-service uh, agreement, the applicant, application for annexation was deemed incomplete because it was not a new service to be provided. By making the fix, fix in statute, any pending future annexations for a ter territory that is already receiving services via now service agreement will not be in jeopardy. This actually applies to uh, what you just approved, the Lost Hills project, because we did the out of service agreement first so that the school could get their, uh, get their water as quick as possible and come back and do the annexation later. This bill actually fixed that. I made sure throughout throughout our whole process that even though you were doing it first, it was very clear to the public and everyone involved that we were doing the annexation as well. So I, I believe I covered us on, on, on this bill and, and what we have to do until this bill is actually active. Another bill that's come up, uh, SB 448, this is by Wykowski. This bill requires LAFCOs to dissolve inactive districts after determining that they meet certain criteria set forth in the statute. By holding one hearing without conducting a special study and with the waiver of a protest hearing. The bill additionally requires all special districts to have a yearly audit of their finances. If there is not an ability or cost prohibitive, the county auditor will conduct the audit or contract with outside firms to perform the audit. There, is, there are specific findings that will allow the County Board of Supervisors to lessen these standards if there is a will to do so. Several inactive districts have been identified in Kern County that will fall under this new law. Most should be dissolved, but there is one that the dissolution could cause a long-term problem for the local community. I've been in contact with the attorney representing that inactive district and made him aware of the bill. Uh, there are certain criteria in the bill that allow an inactive district to remain inactive without being dissolved, and he's looking at those to, to make sure that that district isn't, isn't, isn't harmed and that community is not harmed. Uh, so I wanted you to know about that. We are currently in an audit ourselves. Uh, we do this on a yearly basis. Uh, starts soon after the June 30th deadline of the end of the f fiscal year. Uh, we're coming into the, to the end of that process, at least we, we think we are. The auditor keeps telling us I'm almost done and keeps coming back for more information. Uh, so we keep giving it to them as best we can. Uh, as soon as we have that audit report finished, we will be sharing that with the commission. Uh, I don't typically talk about applications before they come to you, but there's one I, I wanna bring forward. Uh, Kern County has not had a new special district created in a very long time. We've been working with an applicant for several years to create a new water district uh, in, the, in the community of Weldon. Uh, they've been running on several different mutual water companies that will be combining into one uh, special district. And this is a project of the State Water Board. This will give them cleaner and more reliable water, which is a great, great project. Uh, in the LAFCO world, this is exciting stuff. We don't get to do this all the time, so we're, we're kind of excited to move forward with it. It'll be new, new for us. Uh, even though it's new, I, I do have resources. Uh, San Luis Obispo County recently created a new water district and I've been talking to the executive officer there about how they went about doing that. So uh, I'm not standing here completely alone. I've, I've got help, which is good. There are two uh, uh, applications that we've talked about in the past that I wanna uh, bring to your attention. One is the Greater Bakersfield Separation of Grade. Uh, they applied for annexation number five and number six in March of 2013. The, the district has been on an indefinite hold while determining whether the cost of annexation is prohibitive. They have recently approved, uh, received approval from their board to move forward. 
These are very large annexations with over 10,000 property owners and, voter and voters. The district is aware of Colonel Affo's local policy of individual notification of all property and voters in each proposed area. Kern Lafco has received estimates from several mail houses for the cost of printing and mailing notices, as this job is too large for our limited staff. Lafco staff is reviewing this application to see if there's any information that's gone stale or has changed since 2013. Uh, the property owners list and voters list will again be requested by Lafco to the assessor and elections respectively. The applicant is aware that these are additional charges that will be added to their final costs. Recently, you also uh, extended an application for Stockdale 17. Uh, this included an attachment from CSA 71. This was uh, filed in, in February 18th of 2016. Colonel Lafco has a policy of requiring applica applications to be heard within a year of filing unless granted an extension by the commission. After filing for application, the owner of the property asked the commission several times for extensions while they worked out some business issues. The last extension was requested and granted on May, in May for an additional three months with the condition that this would, would be the last extension granted. Upon further discussion with the applicant, it has been, become apparent that the property owner would like to wait until additional time before moving forward. Both the City of Bakersfield and the property owner have been informed that in order to have a hearing before the commission, they must refile a new application and start over again. Therefore, this application has been terminated. A couple months ago, there was a discussion among the commissioners about the use of GIS in LAFCO. We have not forgotten about this request. We're working on possibly bringing you a uh, workshop at the next meeting. My thought here is we'd would be that we would hold the commission meeting first uh, as we would on a regularly scheduled time and adjourn and hold the workshop afterwards. So I want you to know that that's coming. Uh, Cal AFCO conference. That's coming up here at the end of, of, August, of October. Uh, that happens to be when we have our regularly scheduled meeting. So our meeting for October is actually uh, da -da, November. I knew that. Uh, November 4th. Yes. Oh, no, nope. no. Nope. Next scheduled meeting is November 1st. Yes. Uh, thank you, who, those who have signed up for the conference. If there's anyone else who would like to attend, uh, you're more than welcome, but we can no longer guarantee a room at the hotel where the conference is located. Uh, Cal AFCO has a legislative committee, and they are currently looking for new members. Uh, the board will make an appointment at the October 27th meeting at the Cal AFCO conference based on staff recommendation. As there are a limited number of spots for the commission, full participation meetings and, re and requests for feedback is important. Uh, the committee meets on average once per month from November through August with exception of April. Meetings are held both in person and via conference call. In person is, attendance is not required. Meetings typically, typically last from 9.30 to 2 p.m. and the first meeting in November. And the ones towards the end of the legislative year are shorter. There are typically four in-person meetings, two in Sacramento and two in the South, uh, Ontario and San Diego, with the rest being done via conference call. Uh, with, as the commission knows, I have a background in legislation and in the inner workings of the Capitol. Uh, this is a chance to influence both the state legislature on our issues, but other LAFCOs on how we do it better here in Kern County. Uh, I wanna bring this to you if you have any objections to me uh, putting my name in to be on the LAFCO Legislative Committee. Looks like it's a go. I know what I'm in for. I've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the end of my presentation tonight. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Knox. Do we have any other items from the commission? <clears throat> okay. Be, um, I, I have an item I wanted to, to mention. Um, you Probably everybody is... Um, seen in the news that Supervisor Don Maven passed away, and um, and so he actually served on the LAFCO Commission from 2003 to 2010, in addition to being a Kern County Supervisor, and he, he served as a Los Angeles County Sheriff Deputy, 
um, retired as a lieutenant, and before that, served in the United States Marine Corps. And so um, we, I have requested that um, all the county uh, buildings, the flags are um, lowered to half staff um, on the day of his service, which looks like it's gonna be Friday of next week, but um, I think they're still working on details. And so um, I just wanted to adjourn tonight's meeting in his honor. So thank you, and if there are no objections, we are adjourned. <laughs>